If you control the inventory, you control the market, but most real estate agents are failing when it comes to taking more listings. Today, I wanna to share with you five reasons I believe that most people aren't taking as many listings as they should be. I've watched over the years a number of real estate agents that came into the market and it's just a natural progression when you start in the business that you start working with buyers. But ultimately, I've always said it this way, when your business comes to a place where you're, where you're generating more listings sales than you are on the buyer side of sales, that's when you shift from being a real estate salesperson to running a real estate business. So what I wanna to do today is, is I wanna focus in on the reasons that I see that most agents are not taking more listings and give you an opportunity to see what you can be doing right now to kind of flip the switch so to speak, to where you become a listing machine. The first reason I see that most agents are failing when it comes to listing is, is they don't have enough market knowledge. Competence breeds confidence. Confidence breeds contracts. So ultimately, do you have an understanding of the local real estate market in a way that gives you the confidence that you can walk in with a seller, you can sit down at a listing appointment, and that you can explain exactly what's going on, you know the stats well enough to be able to communicate why they should be pricing their home at a certain price, and have you done the due diligence to understand what selling, what are the things that are giving the opportunity for things to sell faster than other places or for higher prices. You see, when you take the time to learn this business better, know your market better than anyone, understand what it takes to get something sold, study all of the things you can find on being able to market a listing in a, in a correct way. If you'll do the upfront work, gain the confidence by understanding more about your market than anyone else, that's the time when you're definitely going to realize that listings is the way for you to build your business. Right along those lines, Number two is you have a unique marketing proposition for sellers. A lot of times when we go into these listings, we go in and we're just hoping to get the listing. We don't need to be going in and going on a listing presentation. As Alan Dalton says, the listing presentation is something that a term that we've used forever because it was used to just list the home on a list of homes that were for sale. Now we need to go in with a marketing proposal of exactly what it is that we can do to get their home sold for the highest price and to get it done in the least amount of time with the least amount of hassle. So uh, what are you doing to prepare for that? I think this is a great opportunity for you to study what it is that other people are doing. Begin to make a checklist of what it is that you would be doing to market a property. I would encourage you, look for what it is. I actually did an interview um, with Jimmy Mackin from Curator. You can see that up above where he talks about going in and talking about the marketing process of going in. Being able to communicate to a seller the exact step-by-step -step details of what it is you're gonna do to market their home, to gain the most exposure, is a plan of action that's gonna give you the opportunity really to take more of these listings. If you have the confidence that you know the market best, and if you have a written plan of action when you walk into those listing appointments, you're gonna walk in with more confidence, and you're gonna walk in with something that most agents don't have. Again, most agents fail when it comes to listings. The way that you can overcome this is by preparing and having a plan of action before you even get to the listing appointment. Third reason I see agents failing when it comes to listings and taking more listings is having a CRM that is full of buyers instead of having a CRM full of sellers. So when you think about this, it's been very easy to purchase leads that were buyer leads over the past few years. It's also very easy to capture leads when we're talking about buyer side with Facebook ads, whether we're running um, Google pay-per-click ads or we're buying leads from Realtor.com or Zillow. That ends up being a CRM that is full of more buyers than it is sellers. Again, when you have a CRM that is full of a certain type of person, ultimately that's who you're going to focus on. So what are we going to do to continue to grow our database out with those homeowners? Couple of things here. We want to start with, are we making our phone calls to buyers or sellers? There needs to be a shift in your focus of shifting some of these calls to going out and trying to find, identify some of these potential owners. This is circle prospecting. This is going in, holding open houses at a specific time for owners in a neighborhood. Depending on your area, this could be door knocking. This could be reaching out to those folks that you know that own homes that you haven't put in your database, but that are in your circle of uh, your sphere of influence or maybe people that you know in your neighborhood. Continue to focus on filling your database with those homeowners that can, can potentially be those listings in the future. That little bit of shift there is going to be something that I know is going to generate more opportunities for you to take more listings. The next reason most agents fail when it comes to listing is, is they don't have a geographical farm or they aren't multiplying this by having multiple geographical farm areas that they're out there focusing 
in on. What is it that you're doing as far as the geographical farm? I'll promise you, I've said it this so many times before, if you don't have an area, specific area, specific neighborhood, where you're viewed as the expert for that neighborhood, you're not viewed as an expert. So let's identify with those specific geographical farms that are for you. A couple of things that you want to do when you're looking for this. You want to find a place that doesn't have a dominant agent. Now a dominant agent can be different in different areas depending on how many houses have sold in the last year. You want to go in and you want to see how many houses were sold in that last year. You want to see is there someone that maybe has done over 25% of the business in that market on the listing side? If there is, that's probably somebody that is pretty ingrained in that. Doesn't mean that we don't want to compete, but we want to find the low hanging fruit first. So we may want to look for something else. We want to see what was the total annual sales volume for that neighborhood. Once we know that total annual sales volume, if we take 10% of that, will it be worth our time to go out and to geographically farm that? Now, it's not just the money you're going to spend, it's the time we're going to spend. But ultimately, I like to think that you're going to spend at least $1 per month. I prefer to put in the budget $2 per month for each single homeowner that is in that neighborhood as far as an expense. So let's say that you've got a home, an area that's got 500 homeowners in it. Okay, so if we're going to be marketing this group and we anticipate we're going to spend $2 per month, we're going to spend about $1,000 a month, $12,000 annual commitment to farm this neighborhood. Now, if you're going to do this a little bit slower, it may be $1 per, whatever it is for you. If we're going to send multiple mailers, we're going to be sending and hosting uh, community events there. We're going to have maybe a night where we're going to have someone that is going to come in as a food truck and we're going to sponsor that. Whatever it is that you're going to do to maximize this neighborhood, we need a one-year commitment. But now that if you know that it's going to cost you $12,000, how many sales do you need in that neighborhood to generate and make this a cash flow positive area? If we're talking about 500 homes and you can generate one listing or two listings that sell and it recovers your costs, this is an opportunity where you should begin to look and see if this is a place you love. Also, choose a neighborhood that you love, something that you're proud and you'd be proud to represent. By finding this low-hanging fruit, becoming the expert in a local geographical farm, this is how we're going to shift our business from being focused on buyers and begin to be a real estate business that is focused on listings. The fifth and most critical point is what we focus on expand. So ultimately what it comes down to is, is the areas of our business that we focus on, those are the ones that are going to expand. Are you focusing on taking listings? Are you focusing on the knowledge you're gaining to grow yourself specifically as a real estate agent? Are you focusing on how to become a better listing agent? Are you focusing on how to become the local expert? Are you focusing on how to geographical farm more? Are you focusing on the number of calls you make on a daily basis that you have more of those calls going to homeowners and potential listings? listings than you do out to buyers. You see, when we shift our focus to focusing in, this is the, where the power is. The power is in the focus. Whatever we focus on absolutely will expand. Focus your business on listings and listings will continue to come your way. The dominant listing agent in your market one year from now is the person who's focusing in on the things we've just talked about. Are you taking the time to be the most knowledgeable agent in your area? Do you have a specific plan of action marketing wise for sellers that you know that you know is going to maximize the opportunity to maximize their price, do it in the quickest amount of time and with the least amount of hassles? When you have that confidence, it's going to give you the ability to move on to that next level and become the number one listing agent in your local market in a very short period of time. I hope this has been helpful and I'll talk you soon. Thanks for watching the video. I specifically chose the video below for you because it builds on the one you just watched. I hope it's helpful and I'll talk to you soon.